Thanks for joining me. This is Danny and welcome back to my real tech series. Today we're going to be doing a little bit of auto crafting sort of with Pneumaticraft drone. They have been with me a while back when we set up this tree farm with Pneumaticraft drones. The Pneumaticraft drone basically grabs axes from this barrel. It breaks down the trees, it picks up all the items, it replants the trees and it drops the wood and such in here, which then get processed into uh, iron because these are ironwood trees. Um, there was one flaw with this tree farm, and that is that the um, drone requires the stone axes in order to cut down the trees. And when it runs out of stone axes, it just stops. So every so often I would have to come in here and replenish them. And then the tree farm would get overgrown like it is now. Drone gets back into cutting it. Um, it takes a while before it becomes efficient. I made again. some changes to the program. We're going to take a look at that now before we get everything set up. So we can see how the auto crafting system works in Pneumaticraft. I know some of you have seen much of this program in the past, but a lot has changed. So I want, just want to kind of take it from the top so that we can fully understand what's going on here. So the program starts with a conditional, and it's a con it's an item conditional, meaning it's checking its own in inventory and it's giving us basically a true or false based on this condition. So the condition is um, whether or not it has a wooden axe. Um, if you remember this in the past, we did use a stone axe. We're now using wooden axes because it can make those and it can be completely self-sufficient. So we're checking to see if there's greater than or equal to one inventory item that matches the filter wooden axe. So if it's true, it's going to go to the label um, on the right. If it's false, it's going to go to the label on the left. Um, so false meaning we don't have a wooden axe in our inventory. We're going to go to the left and we're going to check or we're going to go to the label called axe. The label called axe brings us to um, this chunk of code, which is basically the crafting of axes. Um, so what we're going to do is we're going to go into a chest. We're going to import from an inventory um, ironwood so that and that inventory is this drawer over here, which has ironwood in it, <laughs> obviously. The area I set with the GPS, um, I just took this GPS tool and I shift right click on, on that and that sets the coordinates of the GPS tool. And then I went into this area and I selected the point to, the, to what this GPS tool is holding. Um, so it's gonna go into that drawer, it's gonna grab um, now I do have a use count set in here. If we right click on this, we get our options. doesn't matter what side it accesses it from. It's all going to be the same. We want the use count set to two because we don't want it grabbing as much as it possibly can, which is what it would do if we don't set a use count. So our use count is set to two. So our drone at this point has two ironwood logs in its inventory and nothing else. Um, so we're going to go into this crafting recipe, which basically whatever item filters we put on here in a grid, like these, is going to set up a crafting recipe. So in this case, just one ironwood in a crafting grid is going to give us four ironwood planks, and it doesn't really matter where we put this. And you can see it shows us the recipe, and because this is a uh, shapeless recipe, we can put that wherever we want to, and we get our four ironwood planks. Um, now, we don't have to set a use count here because it only has two ironwoods. If we don't set a use count, if we don't check this box, it's basically going to make as many as it possibly can, and that would be four or that would be two sets so it's going to end up with eight ironwood planks um, so then in the next step we're going to be crafting sticks with two ironwood planks and in this case we do want to set the use count to one because we don't want it using all those planks it just made to uh, craft sticks we only want four sticks so at this point we now have four sticks and we have six ironwood planks left which is just enough to make two axes so then our final crafting is going to be an axe so and this is how you make an axe in a crafting grid so our three planks and our two sticks and we're not going to specify a use count um, it's just going to make as many as it can which is going to be two so then that's the end of the program um, the end of this subroutine basically so it's going to go back to the beginning of the program and it's going to check again hey do i have an axe and this time it's going to say yes i do have an axe so then it's going to go to the harvest subroutine um, so the harvest subroutine, this is the part that some of you have seen before. Um, we're basically going to be, we're going to go on standby and we're going to wait until we can perform some of these um, steps. And the reason for this is because it's going to be, we're going to the dig command where it's going to be digging out ironwood in a particular area. Um, 
and I used the GPS tool for this as well. It was actually the area GPS tool, which holds two points. Digging in order closest, and we are requiring the axe. So the area, if we want to show the area, we can see that it is looking in this area for ironwood. Um, so this entire tree farm, it's looking for ironwood logs. And as soon as it finds any, then it's going to move on from the standby and it's going to go and dig the ironwood logs or break them. Um, and then it's going to go through and it's going to pick up items in that same area. Actually, we can turn this show area, stop showing area. And then we can show this area and we can see that in that area, it's going to pick up any items that are laying on the ground. So as it's breaking these logs down, they're going to be dropping to the ground. So are the leaves or the saplings and the um, ironwood berries. And we want it to pick all that stuff up. And then um, after it's done picking them up, we're going to do two exports to inventory. The first one is going into this, this basic drawer. So it's the same drawer that we we're grabbing the ironwood from. It's going to first put the, it's going to first try to export its inventory into that drawer. Um, it's the same area, so if you want to copy a puzzle piece, you can just middle click and drag. And that's how I did this, so that I only had to set that area once. Um, and then after it's done doing that, it's going to drop whatever else it has in its inventory except for the wooden axe. So when you put an item on the left, that's an exception filter. If you put it on the right, then it says only wooden axes, but if you put it on the left, it says anything but the wooden axe. So so basically it's gonna try to put whatever it can in here, and the only thing it can put in there is ironwood. If this is full, it's not gonna be able to put anything in there. So it's just gonna put whatever it can in there, and then after that, it's gonna put everything else in this barrel except for its wooden axes, which is going to hold on to, of course, because it needs them. Um, and then that's the end. And then it goes back to the beginning. So it's just going to keep basically looping through that until its axe breaks, or until both of the axes break. And then it's gonna say, oh, I don't have an axe. I'm gonna go back over here. And an axe just broke. I am gonna export this program. Um, to Pastebin, and I will have a link to it in the description below. If I forget that link, <laughs> please mention, mention it in the comments. Now, if you do decide to use this program in your own world, um, you will have to change the areas. Um, so you'll have to use, use your GPS tool to set up new points um, for wherever your inventory happens to be and the area of your tree farm. So we no longer even need to use this barrel anymore. That's actually um, no longer needed. And we are going to need some more puzzle pieces now um, because we changed the program up. We're going to end up getting some puzzle pieces back because we moved a bunch of stuff. Um, but we're going to need now dun -dun -dun -dun, three purple puzzle pieces and nine gray puzzle pieces. Um, unfortunately, actually, do we have any gray? Oh, we do have some gray. Okay. So we're going to have to make one set of each because they make they come in sets of eight. So that means we're going to need eight purple plastic and then this printed circuit board, which I'm sure if you've been watching my series, you remember the process of the circuit boards. This is a very complicated process um, that we worked very hard to uh, simplify this process in the past. Um, and that's just green plastic and iron ingots. I actually already grabbed some green plastic out of our plastic mixer. So I can just throw that in here along with the three ingots. And we take our three empty PCBs and we put them in here. And then this guy is gonna turn them into, oh, we need some speed upgrades in there. <laughs> Let's just steal these for now. That's gonna turn those into edge. I got a tip in the comments from Laflam that the pressure chamber interface does allow redstone control. Um, I'm not sure how I didn't notice this before. I think that was a fairly new feature compared to when I started playing with this mod. But we can turn this thing on and off uh, with a signal. So that way we don't have to use the item filter in order to block it from dropping items out. Um, so when we want to craft our transistors and capacitors, um, it'll hold those items until it has all the items that it needs. So we can throw our plastic in there. Actually, let's go this way. And it'll just sit in there um, until we flip that until we flip a lever. So I'm going to put a lever on the front, um, so that it'll power this block, which will end up giving redstone to the item or to the pressure chamber interface, but not to the hopper duct below it because we don't want to give that redstone. Otherwise, that'll block that. So now we can just sit here and wait um, for all our stuff to craft, and then we can flip the lever, and it'll come right back out. All right, now we got everything we need. We can hit the lever, and it'll start pulling stuff out. 
<laughs> nice. There's our two printed circuit boards, and now we just need a bunch of plastic. So we're going to need eight gray plastic. We actually already have six. Seven, eight. And then we need eight, what was the other one? Magenta? Or was it purple? I think it was purple. Because the crafting things are purple. So, oh, the tank is empty. So we need to grab some more plastic from our thermonomatic processing plant. We actually have plenty of that. I'm just going to use a jerry can so we can grab 10, 10 buckets at a time, although we only have six. Crap. Okay, so I guess we need to turn this on. Grab 10 plastic from there, throw it in there, and now we can grab our eight purple plastic. And then craft those into puzzle pieces. And this should be just enough. Or, well, more than enough, actually. So we're going to put those in this barrel, and now we should be able to export program. All right, now let's see how this works. So right now it doesn't have an axe. So the first thing it should do is craft an axe, or the, actually the first thing it should do is grab some wood from there. Okay, so we can see it's crafting, and there it goes. Look at that. Nice. Now because it's using wooden axes, it's a little bit slow, but... That's totally fine because it'll be more than capable of keeping up with this tree farm. Oh, you know what? We do need to give it one more up, one more upgrade though to give it another slot. One more dispenser upgrade to give it another inventory slot because it's going to be carrying two potentially two axes at a time now. We want to make sure that it has extra room so that it can also pick up saplings, wood, and um, ironwood berries. Actually, I'm going to help this guy along a little bit this first time just to clear this out. Um, just so that we can make this go faster and see what he's going to do next. So as soon as there's no more wood left to break, it's going to check the area for items to pick up. There are, ma there are many. <laughs> In fact, it might end up filling up its inventory, but that's fine. It'll get them in the next round, anything that it can't pick up yet. Okay, so now it's going to plant saplings that it has in its inventory. <laughs> nice! And that's all it had, so it'll end up filling this up eventually. It's because when the trees get clustered together like that, you end up with fewer saplings. So now it's just going to wait for a tree to grow. <gasps> oh, there's a bunch of sulfur up there. i got to fix that. So it's just going to keep doing this. Once a tree grows, it's going to break its tree. It's going to break it down again and do that whole process over again until an axe breaks. As soon as an axe breaks, then it's going to make new axes and start the process all over again. So now this tree farm is completely self-sufficient. We never have to do anything in here again. Hooray! And in case you're curious, we have we do have about four stacks of iron in here right now that's completely from this farm. Um, and I've pulled several stacks out of here and it would have been more if it weren't for the whole ax problem because there were a lot of times when this tree farm just wasn't doing anything. It was just sitting idle. So it's been definitely a worthwhile effort. So if you do have any questions, comments, ideas, whatever, feel free to leave them in the comment section below. And of course, if you did enjoy this, don't forget to click the like button and to join me next time. Thanks for watching. Bye-bye.